King Merrick is still widely celebrated as a savior in modern Ferelden, the wild prince that ended the Orlesian occupation of his country and restored the kingdom. But to understand Merrick, we must first look to events that occurred over 50 years before his birth. Emperor Revile of Orlais, commonly known as the Mad Emperor, ordered the second invasion of Ferelden in 824 Blessed. Orlesian forces, aided by traitorous Ferelden nobles undermining the kingdom's defenses, quickly advanced into the country. Merrick's great-grandfather, King Vanadrin, attempted to stop the invaders at the Battle of Lothering. It was a disaster. King Vanadrin was killed in the fighting, and Nemetos, Kalanhad's sword that had been passed down since the kingdom's founding, was lost. Vanadrin was succeeded by his son, King Brandel, who waged a losing bloody campaign to keep his kingdom. All for naught. For all his efforts, Brandel lacked the charisma to unite Ferelden behind him, and the fortresses of the kingdom fell. Even Redcliffe Castle was taken for the second time in its long history, and Denerim was finally sacked in 844 Blessed. Brandel went into hiding and continued to resist Orlesian rule, but even his own people began calling him Brandel the Defeated. There was little hope among the people that the Orlesians could be successfully resisted. The one to truly breathe life into the rebellion was Brandel's daughter, Merrick's mother, Moira Theron. Known as the Rebel Queen, Moira had all the charisma her father lacked, and Merrick would describe her as a tower of strength. We know little of Merrick's father, save that he was a relative of Terran Vorik of Guarin. Moira raised Merrick in the Rebel camp on her own. Moira was determined to recruit allies to her cause, so much so that she allowed herself to be captured by all Rendorn Guarin of Redcliffe. She gambled on his conscience, that he would be unwilling to turn his rightful queen over to the Orlesians, and could be persuaded to support her. She proved correct. Arl Rendorn sent his young sons, Eamon and Tegan, to the Free Marches, while he went into exile with Moira. Arl Rendorn brought his daughter, Rowan, with him, and it was agreed that Merrick and Rowan would marry when they came of age. A coronation ceremony, not recognized by the Chantry, was held for Moira at Redcliffe. Arl Rendorn served as her right hand for the rest of her life. Merrick grew up in rebel camps in the forests of Ferelden, save for when a sympathetic noble would shelter Moira's troops. He was a bit of a lazy child, not a particularly skilled fighter, and infamous for his terrible horsemanship. He viewed the rebellion as his mother's business and hardly ever contemplated the idea that he would one day succeed her as king. The rebellion's leaders, including Arl Rendorn, were quite skeptical of his abilities as a leader, all except his mother, who often expressed her confidence that he could rise to the occasion and lavished affection upon him. Unfortunately, Moira's success in drawing nobles to her cause and popularity among the people drew the attention of King Megrin. Megrin was the cousin and rumored lover of Emperor Florian of Orlais, supposedly assigned to rule over the province after offending the emperor in some way. Megrin was unhappy with his posting, he regarded the Fereldans as backward savages and had a taste both for lavish parties and sadistic punishments. He for a time forced all his Ferelden courtiers to adopt the Orlesian custom of wearing masks and punished the noble whose mask he liked least. He abandoned the practice after it led to an assassination attempt. Megrin left most matters to his advisor, a devious mage named Severan. Seeking to gain favor with Megrin, a group of bands led by Ban Kjorlik of the Southern Banorn set a trap for the Rebel Queen. In 896 Blessed, under the pretense of joining her cause, the bands lured Moira to a meeting and assassinated her. Her body was taken to Denerim, where Megrin placed her head on a spike outside the royal palace. Merrick was with his mother at the meeting, and barely escaped into the woods. The last thing Moira said to her son was, Run. As fate would have it, Merrick ran into the man who would become his best friend, Logain Mactir. Logain had been out hunting food for the outlaw camp led by his father, Gareth. 
They had been farmers once, but the Orlesians had little patience for Ferelden's freeholders. When the family was unable to pay the Orlesian taxes, a chevalier punished them by raping and murdering Loghain's mother. Loghain and Gareth were forced to watch. After burying his wife, Gareth disappeared for a week. When he returned, he told his son that he had killed the men responsible, and they fled into the hills to live as outlaws. Marg initially hid his identity from the outlaws, but as his pursuers closed on Gareth's camp, he revealed that he was the prince. Loghain was angry at Merrick for bringing this destruction upon them, but to both of their surprise, Gareth knelt before the prince. The elder outlaw explained that he had fought in King Brandel's army as a sergeant at arms. Realizing Merrick was Ferelden's best hope to be free of Orlesian rule, Gareth ordered his son to take Merrick to safety through the Kukari wilds as he prepared to cover their retreat. Though taken aback by Gareth's devotion, Merrick attempted to pay the man back the only way he could think of, and bade Gareth kneel. In the name of Callanhad the Great, here in the sight of the Maker, I declare you a knight of Ferelden. Rise and serve your land, Sir Gareth. His first kingly act. Loghain led Merrick away from the outlaw camp as Ban Kjorlik's men closed in on them, and they heard Gareth's battle cries cut brutally short as they slipped into the wilds. A strange friendship began to form between the outlaw and the prince in the wilds. Though initially angry at Merrick for what had happened, Loghain found the hapless prince difficult to hate and couldn't abandon him. Merrick needed Loghain to stay alive. After several days wandering, the duo was captured by a clan of Dalish elves. They feared for their lives, but the Dalish were serving another that day. Someone had ordered them to take those who had fled into the wilds. The Dalish brought them deep into the wilds to a solitary hut where bodies hung from the trees. The elves spoke of Asha Belinar, the woman of many years, but in human story she is known as Flemeth, the witch of the wilds. The Dalish left them there, and the witch made herself known. The cryptic old woman displayed unsettling knowledge of their pasts, and offered Merrick a chilling prophecy regarding Loghain. Keep him close and he will betray you, each time worse than the last. The witch offered to direct Merrick and Loghain safely out of the wilds in exchange for a promise from the prince, given in private and never spoken aloud to anyone. The young prince agreed reluctantly and followed the witch into her hut. Loghain waited alone outside for hours and when Merrick emerged he was deeply shaken and uncharacteristically quiet yet he refused to discuss what promise he had given to the witch. When morning came, the duo awoke to find their wounds healed, the weapons the Dalish had taken returned, and provisions provided for them. A bluebird appeared out of the forest, and following it they were led to the edge of the wilds. They found themselves again in the South Ron Hills, far distant from where they had originally entered. They were met by Ferelden knights led by Rowan Guerin, Merrick's betrothed, who brought them to the rebel camp. They found the rebellion preparing to scatter in the face of an encroaching horde of Orlesians and their Ferelden allies. Merrick refused to throw away the army his mother had built, and Loghain concocted a plan to defeat the superior force. Himself dressed as Merrick and acting as a decoy, Loghain would draw the eastern attacking force away with a small group of volunteers, allowing the bulk of the rebel army to deal with only half of the army approaching them. Merrick fought beside the infantry, much to the consternation of his advisors. Loghain and his men were almost all killed, saved to the last minute by Rowan's knights, but the plan was a massive success. The Orlesian forces were routed, Loghain became a hero of the rebellion, and the rebels began to put their faith in their new king. The rebellion had escaped to fight another day, and in the capital, the usurper's advisors concocted new plans to entrap them. Okay, this video has been a long time coming. Originally, I had planned to make these videos after rereading the first two Dragon Age books, but I kinda lost interest about halfway through The Stolen Throne. That's not so much about the quality of the book, so much as very few books actually hold my attention very well the second time through, and it got a bit tedious since I was taking notes. 
Ultimately, I finished and wrote a script, then I got sick and I didn't want to record it then. It sort of just snowballed. Anyway, this is a three-part series on Merrick. The other two are recorded, and it's just a matter of editing now. You'll see me again soon.